the Gadget Guy here with Lithium Powered Flashlights 101. Here's what you need to know. This is a really hot up and coming topic and gizmo here in the winter of 2014, 2015. So you're probably gonna come across these if you haven't already. And today I'm gonna to talk about the general aspects of them and how to pick a good one for yourself. So these are powered by a new type of battery that we haven't seen in the US market before. And they are batteries that look like this. Okay, they're sort of you know, tubular and familiar, yet they are of a different diameter and length than we're normally used to seeing. And these are lithium pol polymer rechargeable batteries. They have designations that tell you the size of them in millimeters. So this is the 18650, and it has to do with the length and diameter of the battery. And this is a 26650, okay? Same length, I guess it's six, maybe 650 millimeters. And it talks about the diameter. And there are two types of these. Now, of course, there are many different brands. We'll talk about that too. But there are two basic types. That is the protected and unprotected. Lithium batteries can, because they're so powerful, have a catastrophic failure mode where they can, you know, shoot sparks and flames out of them quite a bit more than any other battery prior to this could possibly do. So they, and in the best situations, are protected. Now, and sometimes when you're using these, they're not in, in a closed environment like a flashlight, and protection would not be as important. But protected cells uh, are, are marked that way, and also you can tell that they're a protected cell because they have a sort of different bottom to them. On the protected cells, the bottom is a circuit board, and in this case with the UltraFire, it's marked, and you can tell it sort of has a, a look to it. The unprotected cells will have a standard metal bottom that looks like this. So that means that there is a circuit board in there also. The battery will be longer by the amount of that circuit board. So as you can see in these two over here, uh, the protected cell is a little bit longer. And also on the protected cells, there's a conductor that's usually under the, the plastic at some point. Sometimes you can find it, sometimes you can't. There's an actual band. You'll see a little bimp going down the side underneath the edge where the uh, conductor to the circuit board is going. It's hard to detect in some cells, but on others it's a little easier, and that'll prove that you have a circuit board on the bottom that's doing the protection from under and overcharging. That's one of your levels of security and safety on a cell like this. And remember that some of the popular Chinese brands are being cloned. I'm not going to say anything right here about this, but one of these is very likely a clone, and one is the real one, because both of them say they're protected cells, and one does not have it protection on the bottom, the circuit board. And also, even though they're marked in a certain power level, like this is a 4,500 mA hour and a 4,000 mA hour, one of these cells is significantly heavier than the other, indicating that, well, this may be mismarked and not give you the kind of life you're looking for uh, or paying for. These larger batteries, I mean, this has got some real heft to it. I'm not, not quite focusing there. And you can tell there's a lot more power available in a, in a battery like this. So getting a battery of high quality is one of the uh, ways to stay safe with lithium polymer rechargeable tubular batteries like this. And you're going to see ones by, I'm just going to tell you, Sony and Panasonic that are much higher in price. Under that are going to be Samsung and LG, a little bit lower. And then some other brands that are way, way above the others in price and are are touted to be safe batteries with protection circuits in them. So if you can spring for the money for a Sony or Panasonic, you should. And you can just buy those as per the cost will relate to the different MA hours. A lot of these imports have exaggerated capacities on the MAH. So uh, you, can, you can tell that you, know, you probably are getting exactly what you paid for with the Sonys and Panasonics and the others are, the imports are, are exaggerated. Now, there are several very popular models as of right now in the market. This is one of the most popular models. Now, what you're seeing with the white banding on here and the pieces of tape is uh, 3M reflector tape I put on these. And the reason for that is that uh, if you're out camping with one of these things and you drop it in the leaves or dirt, uh, good luck finding it if it's black and it's nighttime out. So I put this little reflector tape on. It's a really quick mod that I find is uh, you know really helpful to find these flashlights at night. This is the UltraFire Ultra 502B. They have a 502A, I believe, and a 502B, slightly different. But this is your super popular $10 runs on 18650 battery flashlight 
that's extremely popular right now and a really, really good value. And um, I, I could easily say that you, know, you can get, get two or three of these babies and throw them in the box. They're, uh, they're very nice performers. I have nothing bad to say about these. So, uh, okay, let's take a look. On the really cheap level, you're going to find stuff like this that's got a, a zoom front on it and those do work. It's rather a broad floodlight type of look. Just look at the bodies on these. Now, they have, the bodies and the lenses might be the same, you know, but the guts may be different. And that has to do with what LED is in there, whether it's a T6 or an XML. Uh, Cree is usually the manufacturers on these, C-R-E-E, -E, and, the, and the, whatever it says on the side here doesn't make any difference because these come out of Chinese factories and are just labeled any which thing. The Ultrafires, and this is more like $6 level, and I find this to be a useful flashlight. In the $10 level with the Ultrafire, you'll, feel, you'll find this label under others, but Ultrafire is the main labeling you'll, you'll see on this, the WF502B. And uh, its quality is pretty darn good in this particular model. This, take a look at the way the body is on this. Clickers are in the back. Uh, but you will find some with the same body shape for $5 or less that don't have the same guts in them. So at least you know you're getting a, a pretty quality instrument with the Ultrafire, the actual Ultrafire 502. I'm finding that the Convoy line uh, out of China, again, seems to be machined well. The bodies are machined really well, and then you got your internal components. The internal components seem to be pretty darn good as well. That has to do with the quality of the switch and the LED. All of these are completely disassemblable down to the component pieces so that you can actually from the Orient on places like Fast Tech and others buy the actual guts to these things, the springs, the switches, and go ahead and assemble your own flashlight. The body styles, many of them are sold uh, as build-ups. In other words, just the case. They just call it a blank case for about say eight bucks in this case. This Convoy C8 is available as a blank flashlight build-up case. I'm going to take it apart and you'll see that you know everything comes out. They sell the, the, the glass lenses, the reflectors, nice machined aluminum. These are nice pieces. Not bad at all. And inside is the LED itself. You can sort of see it in there. And it's a circular board, either 20 millimeters or 16 millimeters, mounted into this sort of machined aluminum heat sink, which is this thing here, because these things do dissipate a lot of heat. In back of the LED board itself, we're not going to be able to see it too well, is the controller board. The good ones of these, I can tell you right now, have uh, the little stars on them like that. You can see those stars, and those are actually programmable. You can solder those to ground and change the programming on these. And they've got up to seven of those little, I think they're 7133, something like that, I see on them that handle the current for driving these. So those are the, the rather good boards. And you can unscrew the top board and the bottom board, buy those for three, four dollars each out of the Orient, and go ahead and assemble your own flashlights in these blank cases. So that's pretty cool, huh? The thing you're going to see on these babies is the amount of lumens they put out and the color temperature of the LED. The lumens range from 300 to about 1100. 500, which is really the zone of this little puppy here, the 502, is a really good working level. Uh, you can really, you know, I can't imagine needing any more than that in typical use camping and everything else. And also, uh, they're adjustable in the output. Once you get up to the 1100 level, you're really cranking some light. You're really, you know, lighting up stuff down the block. That's fine, but it's going to use more power. The uh, color temperature in K and Kelvin is all the way from the warm orange spectra all the way up to the blue. And just for reference, 3000 is the warm yellowish look and 5200 is daylight bright outside bluish light. So you can see that these flashlights usually have drop down menus when you order them. A lot of them do as to what LED, LED driver you want and what color temperature range it's going to have. And I find that the stuff in the 3500 to 4500 range is the most natural looking when you shine it on things. If you really want just blasting white light, go up to the 5000 range or above, and that produces actually more lumens, but it's a little more bluish and a little less natural in its color representation. So those are the choices you have to make. A little less output on the low level of color temperature, around 3000, but a more natural representation of the colors in your environment when you shine it on there. So 
that's what you're uh, you know you're considering when you look at that. Let's take a look at the uh, what I would call the top of the line. There's a, a configuration in flashlights called the C8. It's a very popular configuration. It has to be this sort of this form factor, and uh, this X. INTD happens to be one of the most, well, they consider it to be one of the real top of the line C8 configurations. And pretty cool flashlight. It is much heavier than some of the others. It's more expensive than some of the others. Uh, it is, well, when you don't mind spending a little bit more and getting something that's really, you know, mostly the machining of the metal and the quality is what you're looking at on here. And this little puppy runs on 18650s or the larger cell. This has a insert, a little sort of feels like Delrin plastic that is gasketed at both ends, and it allows the use of the 18650 battery. So basically you slide that baby in there, and then you can slide the battery in, and it works just fine. Now in the high power mode, this little baby pulls a lot of current, and you're going to want to use the 26650 battery size on this. On the XINTD, it's still a little loose in the holder over here. Now, it, it works fine, but you know, I don't know. I always like to mod things, so I took a little bit of the fuzzy part of some Velcro and made some strips about one-third of the way around on the battery, and it just centers it perfectly and sort of buffers it in there from shock, which is nice. Screw it back in, and you're in good shape. Yep. And remember that you want to screw it tight because that's where the electrical contact is made in the very back of the cap on the XINTD. Uh, this also screws apart from the front. I started unscrewing it and it came apart from the front. <laughs> but also remember that the connection point on the XINTD is right here at the very edge because these are anodized, these threads. Take a little 220 and just go around the lip. Be sure that there's no anodization on that whatsoever over there, so you do have a good electrical contact. Scanner in the background there. And thus, it does need to be um, tightened down all the way to get your good electrical contact. So, there we go. Some of the very popular models on the 2014-15 uh, winter season. And uh, you really can't go wrong with any of these. It's just sort of how much money you want to spend. You really want to go super luxe. You get the uh, big XINTD over here. As far as value-wise, we're looking at the Convoy C8 as really being the value leader because it produces the same amount of light using the same LED emitter as the XINTD. It's just not the super Cadillac build. Uh, these, if you get in a legit one, is about $15-ish, 14 dollars 15 16 uh, And you do get to choose the color temperature you want. And it does have the big head on it, so that's really what produces the light. Remember, you do have a choice of crinkly finish on some of these on the reflector and a sharp uh, glassy finish. And that really makes the more broad light on the crinkle finish and a more spotlight on this one. So, of course, I'd throw a couple of these uh, 502B ultrafires in there, too, just for good measure. What a great little flashlight. You just can't beat it. So there you go. Now, because you're using lithium batteries, these things have a lot of power in them, a lot more than we're used to. They can power these high current draw items over here and produce a tremendous amount of light for a small uh, form factor. The downside is these can have catastrophic discharge of their energy, and you need to know how to use them safely. So look at my uh, second video, I'll put a link there, on how to run these as safely as possible uh, because uh, we don't want to have any problems. So thanks for looking, and catch you next time.